This video is an introduction to vMix, the software we use at Pittsford Community Church for live streaming services and other events. In professional broadcast studios, there are several people involved with running cameras, titles, switching, sound, and other activities. One of the advantages of vMix is that one person can run all of those things from one station. However, it also means that the vMix interface is somewhat complex. There's a lot going on for one operator to pay attention to. Don't worry. With a little training and experience, you can pull this all together and produce a very professional broadcast. This is what the vMix interface looks like. We'll go around the screen and describe each of the areas. This little bar at the upper left is for presets. This allows us to store all of the settings so we don't need to go back and set it up fresh every time. Let's take a step back and see how we open vMix with this preset already loaded. On the desktop, you will find this folder called Presets. When you open it, you will see a number of files which have various names. We'll use this one, which is called 1080p 21.12.12. We have a conventional way for naming standard presets. 1080p means that all of the settings are at the high definition broadcast resolution 1080p. 21.12.12 is the date. This preset was set up for the service on December 12th, 2021. The first two digits indicate the year. The second two digits indicate the month, and the remaining digits indicate the day. This may seem a bit unusual, but by using this code, when the files are sorted alphabetically or numerically, they're also correctly sorted by date. We double-click on this preset file, and vMix will open with this preset already loaded. You may have noticed there are other preset files with other names, and you will be able to create and save your own preset files. However, you should start with our standard presets, the one with the most recent date. If you have vMix open and you want to change or reload the preset, you can do that with this Preset Open button. In the center, we have this Full Screen button, which is highlighted green, indicating that the output screen is being sent to a full screen monitor. You shouldn't need to do anything with this, but there is something you need to understand in this next area. This bar at the upper right gives access to some very basic settings, which you shouldn't need to work with, with one exception, which has to do with that full screen output. Our broadcast setup actually uses three monitors. The largest monitor at the left shows the main vMix interface. The center monitor shows some additional reference information. The smallest monitor at the right shows the full screen output of what is being broadcast. This third monitor also provides the signal for the display in the church foyer. The problem is that sometimes on startup, vMix puts the full screen display onto the center monitor. If this happens, you need to change the full screen output display setting. To do this, open settings. Make sure you're on display settings. Under the full screen setting, make sure the display is set to number 2. This center section in the upper area has to do with transitions and overlays, which we'll talk more about later. It also shows a clock and a reference for the audio output levels. This large window in the upper right with a green bar across the top is the output window. This is what is being actually broadcast. On the left is the preview window, with the orange bar across the top. This is where the switcher operator can make sure they like the composition before transitioning it to the output. There are a number of fancy transitions available, but we usually stay with three basic ones, cut, fade, and merge. Using cut swaps the preview to the output window quickly. Using fade gives a gentler transition. Merge is similar to Fade, but does some things a little differently. We'll look at that later. You can change what transition goes with each of these four buttons, but the transition at the top button can also be controlled with the transition bar. This allows the switcher to control the speed of the transition. Along the bottom, the first button is the Add Input button, which is how we created all of these. Next, we have several buttons associated with recording, outputs, and some other functions. Record and stream are the only two we need to use. 
In the middle right, there's an audio mixer button, which turns the audio mixer display on and off. The audio mixer display should show on the second monitor. Finally, in the center, we have all of these inputs. Working with these inputs is really the key to the vMix operation, and it's what we'll discuss in the next video.